Microphones. 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 Guess what this episode's about? Another thing I'd like for you to guess is which one of these microphones is recording my voice right now. Here's a hint. Any mic that has no cord plugged into it is not recording my voice. This episode covers the basics of microphones, the different types of mics, what type of mic to use, and miking techniques. So enough with the talking. Let's get right to it, eh? Microphones, the mechanical equivalent of ears. Microphones turn acoustic sound waves into a little electronic signals that we get to play with when we make records. There's a few different types of microphones. Basically, there's dynamic microphones, there's condenser microphones, and there's ribbon microphones. Here, we have a technical explanation of a dynamic mic. Feel free to pause and read it, maybe take a screenshot. Here we have a technical description of a condenser microphone. Feel free to pause, take a screenshot. Me, I look at microphones as what kind of mic do I need to record the thing I want to record. It's very basic the way I look at it. I don't care technically about what's going on. The only thing I care is does the mic give me what I need. First, let's talk about dynamic microphones, okay? Uh, dynamic microphones are rugged microphones. They can be used in situations where there's high sound pressure, where they can take a beating, like at a rock and roll club, do an outdoor gig, you want to have a dynamic microphone. They're rugged. They don't fall apart easy. Hard to break them. We've already seen this one, Sure SM57. Retails probably for around 100 bucks. You can use it for snare on snare drums guitar amps, vocals, just about anything. They work very well. Shure SM58, a slight variation on the 57. It's designed for vocals. Sennheiser 421, nice microphone for uh, tom-toms, kick drums, guitar amps. The characteristic of this mic is it's, it has a lot of nice sweet high end for, for a dynamic mic. Also has a lot of nice sweet low end, so it's kind of a smile curve to it. Electro Voice RE20. This is a great microphone for many applications. It's a round sounding dynamic microphone. You can use them on bass guitar amps, motorcycles. Its great characteristic is the fact that it can hear low frequencies for a dynamic microphone very nicely. So it's great for recording a bass guitar amp, vocals. It's good. It's a good radio broadcast mic. I think uh, a golden version of this is what Rush Limbaugh uses, uh, at least the pictures I've seen. Good kick drum mic. Sure SM7, another good quality broadcast dynamic microphone. Uh, great drum mic as well, you know. I've used it on floor toms before, used it on vocals, uh, I've used it um, I've used it to record acoustic guitars. So those are a few different types of dynamic microphones and their applications. Now let's talk about condenser microphones. Condenser microphones require power. They need DC voltage in order to operate. This can be supplied by a mic preamp or a board. 48 volts for a transistor microphone, or it can be supplied by a power supply for a tube condenser microphone. Now, the dynamic mics that we were looking at earlier, like this RE20, they tend to look in a certain direction. So this microphone, when I talk, it's looking at my mouth right now, if I turn it this way, it's looking at the camera. If I turn it this way, it's looking at the roof. So you point these mics where you want them to hear. Small condenser microphones, such as this one, are similar. They look in a certain direction, okay? Wherever you point them is where they look. 
This microphone here is a Neumann U87, a very, very nice uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. It looks where you tell it to look. It has a switch on the front that allows this microphone to look at a, in a cardioid pattern, which is essentially right now it's looking in this direction, just like kind of like a, di a dynamic mic has a cardioid pattern. It's looking at like this. That's how it's hearing. Now, if I switch it to Omni, this microphone is hearing everything equally in all directions, 360 degrees. You can also tell it to do a figure eight pattern where it's looking this way and this way and it's rejecting sound coming from the side. The cool thing about large diaphragm condenser mics is you can tell them where you want them to look. Okay, so we know there's different types of mics. So what type of mic do you use when it comes time to record? Well, that's gonna depend on what you're recording. If it's something that's loud, like a guitar amplifier, or you're gonna put a mic close to a loud sound source, like a drum, like a snare drum, or a tom-tom, then a dynamic mic is a good choice. However, if you're going to record something that is not that loud and has a lot of sound characteristic to it, like a vocal or a saxophone, you know, a piano, you know, if you're lucky enough to be able to have a piano to record, a condenser mic's a great idea for that. If you've seen pictures of like Frank Sinatra recording a vocal or the Beatles doing a vocal, they'll be singing and the microphone will literally be a foot or two away, you know, because the microphone is picking up all the beautiful frequencies that they're putting out, not just out of their mouth, but you know, their cranium is resonating, their chest is resonating. And that's what made the crooners so popular was the fact that that was right around the time when ribbon mics and condenser mics came into being. And the you could actually hear what a person sounded like when they were singing. The condenser mics have the ability to pick that up. Hi there, this is that part of the video where I'm going to ask you to consider subscribing and also I'm going to let you know that this is a video that's part of a whole series of videos for people who have project studios that are new to having a project studio for the kind of the beginner, okay? If you like what you're seeing, please check out the other episodes. Okay, now let's start talking about mic technique. One of the first things you need to consider is how close a microphone is to the source of the sound. The closer a microphone gets to the sound source, the more the proximity effect comes into being. And the proximity effect, what it does is, a build, is it, it is a buildup of lower frequencies that can sometimes be good and can sometimes be too much. Proximity effect, dynamic microphone. The closer the sound source moves to the microphone, the more low frequencies you have and the more the proximity effect is displayed as you pull away from the microphone, there's less proximity effect until you get further away and you have even less proximity effect. Proximity effect on a large diaphragm condenser microphone as the sound source moves closer to the diaphragm, we hear the proximity effect build up until we, when you get right up on it. We hear all the low end build up of the low frequencies and we pull away and the, low the proximity effect decreases and until we get to the point to where it's hardly an effect at all. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was about a foot and a half away from that U87, that large condenser microphone, it was picking up a lot of resonance off of my voice, not so much from my mouth, but just the space. Sound travels and propagates in space. And sometimes you can get more low end on something, more pretty low end on something by having distance. 
Second microphone technique is microphone placement. Where you place a microphone makes a big difference depending on the sound source. Every sound source typically has an area that has more low, more low frequencies or more high frequencies. Putting the microphone in the right place will change the tonality of what you're recording. All right, so this is a microphone pointed at the, where the neck meets the body. All right, now we're gonna talk about, so that's an area that has a balance. You get further up the neck. brighter, less low end. You get down to the area where the hole is, it's got more low end. So different areas of an instrument have different tonality. Mic placement for tonality. This amplifier speaker is a 12 inch speaker it's centered in the cabinet the center of the cone is right about here i've got the microphone pointed right at the center of the cone that's what that sounds like to get it darker without changing eq or whatever i go to the side i go to the edge of the speaker in between gets you a little brighter. Getting in the center should be even brighter. So that shows you that moving the microphone can change the tone even on a guitar amplifier. Another microphone technique is patterns. What do I mean by patterns? Microphones look in certain directions to hear sounds. Sometimes they're looking in one direction, sometimes they're looking in every direction, sometimes they're looking in two directions. So you have certain microphones that have the ability to change the direction they look, and other microphones only have one option. Large diaphragm condenser microphone in a cardioid pattern. The mic is looking in this direction. The pattern goes around and gets smaller on the back side. As I talk and walk around the mic, you'll notice that my voice becomes less loud, less gain, and less frequencies, less defined until I get all the way around to the back of the microphone and you hear my voice at the lowest amplitude and the least amount of frequencies. As I continue walking around the microphone, you'll notice that my voice will have more frequencies and get louder because the microphone is looking in this direction. Large diaphragm condenser microphone figure eight pattern. The mic is looking in this direction and the mic is looking in that direction. It is rejecting sound from this direction and from this direction. So you'll notice as I walk around the microphone, when I get to the side that is rejecting sound, this would be less frequencies and less amplitude. As I come around to the back of the microphone, it'll sound similar to the front side of the microphone. More frequencies, more amplitude. The side of the microphone, less frequencies, less amplitude front of the microphone, more frequencies, more amplitude. Great situation if you want to have two singers doing background vocals or singing together. You get one singer on this side, one singer on this side. They perform together. You get it in one take. Large diaphragm condenser microphone, omni pattern. It's looking 360 degrees. As I walk around the microphone, my voice should not change in amplitude or in tonality as I walk around the mic. It should all be even 
as I walk around the microphone. It should be one linear nice thing. Great thing if you want to have a room microphone. You got a great room, you got a whole band in there making a bunch of noise or drums playing in the room. Turn up, put up an Omni microphone. Works like a champ. All right, I hope you know a little bit more about microphones now. Different kinds, different techniques, different patterns, etc. What kind of microphone should you get though? You're just starting out? Well, if I was just starting out, I would pick between two manufacturers or maybe a combination of the two. I would look into Shure microphones and Audio-Technica microphones. Both companies make really excellent products and they make some microphones that are extremely affordable. That's what I would do anyway. In episode 10, we're gonna delve into room acoustics, how to get the liveness of your room under control, different methods, different considerations. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and continue watching the Home Studio for Beginners course here on Record Mix Repeat. I'm your host, Rusty Smith. Thank you for watching.